What's going on guys and welcome to this episode of our Carolina Panthers Madden 24 Rebuild. This week we're going to be moving on to week 7, our bye week. And with that we're going to go over uh, season stats, we're going to go over college players. So let's move on to week 7. Alright and here we are in week 7, our bye week this week. Uh, first thing we're going to do, let's take a look at our stats on the year so far so far we've got Bryce Young who just passed 1100 yards he's up to 1125 six touchdowns 13 interceptions a lot of those have been on me Andy Dalton right behind him with 17 yards and one interception no touchdowns uh, Bryce has been sacked six or 18 times he's been okay we did bench him in the uh, second half of one game for Andy Dalton Andy Dalton came in and went three for 13. Uh, yeah, that was wonderful. So, and then running, we got Miles Sanders averaging four yards a carry with six touchdowns. He's up to 462 yards so far this year. Chuba Hubbard just behind him at 92 yards, followed by Bryce. We probably need to use his speed a little bit more. Um, something I haven't been doing is getting out of the pocket with Bryce. Um, so hopefully we'll maybe see a little bit more of that uh, as we move on uh, in the season. Receiving right now, Adam Thielen leads us in receptions and yards. He's got 24 receptions, 330 yards, two touchdowns. Let's see, followed by DJ Chark, who's at nine receptions for 176. The rookie Mingo doesn't appear to be hurt after leaving last week's game. He's got 11 receptions for 136. T Terrence Marshall right behind him at 137. Hayden Hurst, who's been hurt, looks like he's healthy now. He's at 115. Tremble just under 100 yards. Sanders coming out of the backfield with 65. Ian Thomas, 56. Even Giovanni Ritchie saw some time with Hayden Hurst out. Not much for Shy and Chuba. Uh, so far... Only two touchdowns lead the team, and those go to Thielen. Uh, blocking hasn't seemed too bad. Michael Jordan's come in to play in Christensen's spot because he's been hurt and he's been he's been fine. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Taylor Moten's been our big problem, which doesn't make sense. He's our best offensive lineman, so we'll have to figure that out. Shaq leads us in tackles with 69. Excellent. Also leads us in tackles for a loss. Shaq's been all over the field. Look at that. He also leads us. In, Shaq is just doing everything. Also leads us in sacks with two and a half, which ties him for the team lead with Deion Jones, Brian Burns, and Derek Brown. And then CJ Henderson and Frankie Louvu. Like we're getting production. Ah, man. We just need more. We need more there. Interceptions. We got two for JC Horn, two for Keith Taylor, who did them both. In the last game against Miami, Deion Jones has one, Frankie Louvu has one, Von Bell, Dante Jackson, and Xavier Wood. So the defense is taking the ball away. That's excellent. And of course, Dante Jackson has that huge 101 yard uh, interception return for a touchdown. Deion Jones knocking down passes left and right, him and Shaq with six. And then three forced fumbles to Brian Burns, Shaq, and Dion. We have two recoveries from Burns and Jones. Uh, not much going there. No blocks, no safeties. The one touchdown. Excellent. <clears throat> Pinheiro has been excellent on the nine extra points he's made and ten field goals. He's been perfect with a long of 56. He's hit two from past the 50. Excellent, excellent. And then Hecker has punted for 772 yards. Four of those 17 have been in the 20 with just the one touchback with a long of 49. Wonderful. Kick returns haven't been too exciting. Shy Smith just averaging just over 20 yards. It's kind of disappointing there. Uh, punt returns, I know we had the big one here. Uh, we had a nice uh, punt return for a touchdown in our last game. So wonderful. Let's take a look at the NFL. So right now at week seven, 
Matthew Stafford leads everybody in passing yards, followed by Joe Burrows, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, who's not out with uh, an Achilles tear, or was it ACL? And then Kirk Cousins. We are nowhere near that top. Touchdowns go to Trevor Lawrence, who's having himself a year. He's got 15 touchdowns, followed by Stafford's 14, Burrow's 13, and Derek Carr's 13. Wow. And then interceptions. Look at that. We lead the league in something. Bryce Young leads the league in interceptions with 13, followed by Jacoby Brissett. I didn't think anybody was going to have a worse year than uh, Bryce Young, but it's Jacoby. Uh, Mac not looking too good. Baker not off to a good start in uh, Tampa. Brock Purdy doing okay. Justin Fields with the addition of DJ Moore not really doing too much there. Good completion percentage, but not a lot of yards and touchdowns. Uh, fellow rookie Anthony Richardson was f also having a pretty bad year. I guess it's a bad year for rookie quarterbacks, eh? Rushing. Dalvin Cook leads everybody in attempts followed closely by Miles Sanders and uh, Damian P uh, Pierce. Price? Pierce. Pierce. Sure. And Josh Jacobs leads everybody in rushing, followed by Pierce, Derek Henry, Alvin Kamara, Ezekiel Elliott up in New England, Dalvin Cook up in New, uh, New York, <clears throat> and Miles down here. Touchdowns, we've got Leonard Fournette with seven, Isaiah Pat, uh, Pachico, Pachico? Sure. Uh, the so what, second year man out of Rutgers was seven. Dalvin Cook was seven. Uh, Jacobs and Sanders there was six. Not too bad. Who's fumbling the ball away? Christian. What? These are low numbers for Christian. And then J.K. Dobbins, uh, Damian Harris, Cam Akers. Bryce has his two. All right. Receiving Cooper Cup leads in receptions tied with Justin Jefferson and Cup also leading in yards with 628 followed by Christian Kirk, Justin Jefferson, T. Higgins, Traquan Smith, me Cole Hardman, and Darnell Mooney and Kelsey uh, all with over 400. Marquez Goodwin going ham. He's the guy averaging 40. Um, he must have had just one good day. Touchdowns, Cooper Cup. He is the Triple Crown leader right now. Can he keep it going for the next 10 weeks? We'll see. Christian Kirk with seven. Kelsey with six. Mike Evans with five touchdowns. Not bad at all. Who's giving up the most sacks? Tyler Decker. That's wild. And we see we got Moten pretty high up there. Got to get those sacks off the... Uh, right side of our line leading the NFL in tackles Shaq Thompson with his 69 Deion Jones down there as well linebackers are busy tackles for loss go to Mika Parsons and Chris Jones excellent job by them Aaron Donald already has 12 sacks what why does Aaron Donald have 12 sacks in I don't know six games yeah he's averaging two sacks per game that's dumb. <laughs> uh, Odafi Oway is at uh, 9.5. Von Miller, 8.5. Nuosu, 6.5. Dexter Lawrence, 6.5. No Panthers up here. Interceptions. We got three for Demario Davis, three for Jeff Okuda, uh, and three for... Tar oh my god, Woolen <laughs> and Cole Holcomb, <laughs> and then a number of people with two. Excellent. Let's see, anything else here interesting? Any blocks so far this year? We got three Parman, Tyron Matthew, and Matthew Ioannidis all have sack or er, blocks and three safeties. Harmon Mack and Dexter Lawrence. Excellent. Defensive touchdowns go to Kyle Duggar, Patrick Peterson, Derek Stingley, Demario Davis, Sean Murphy Bunting, Khalil Mack, and 
to Marcus. No, wait, sorry. Disregard a handful of those because I was looking at a different stat. Um, uh, this doesn't include uh, Dante Jackson. That's cool. Kicking, how are we looking? Handful of kickers hitting all their kicks. Randy Bullock has attempted the most, followed by Pinheiro. Pinheiro's made the most. Longest so far this year, 59 by Jason Myers. Whew. Get that guy a new leg. He's going to need it. Handful of blocked kicks this year. Extra points. 23 for 23. Will Lutz. Handful of really good ones there. And a number of blocks. Who's made the most from outside of 56? For Kami... Kami? Fairborn? Baron? And six for Jake Moody. Oh, he's a rookie. Cool. Jason Myers with five. That is awesome. Most touch or kickoffs go to Justin Tucker and touchbacks Jake Elliott's. Man, if we scored more points, we could get more touchbacks. That's for sure. All right. Punting, who leads in yardage? Sterling Hoffreicher. Reicher? Riker? Sure. Ooh, Hecker not doing well in average. Not the punt into the, uh, with the wind at some point. <laughs> Two blocked punts, Anger and Gil Gilligan. Most in the 2011, Sam Martin. Ooh, pinning people deep. That's nasty. And then Presley Harvey the third can't keep it out of the end zone. Longest so far this year, Tress Way with 74. And then a handful of people here all playing for the red team. Actually, wow, look at that. They all play for the red team. We got the commanders, the chiefs, the cards, and bucks. Interesting. So many red colored teams. Anybody kick return touchdowns so far? No. Shy Smith has the most because we, our defense just can't stop anybody, so they're scoring all over us. And then punt return kickoff. Stefan Diggs and Raheem Blackshear. Diggs got one. Nice. All right. Here's a look at the overall stats for everybody. Let's go back to the team stats here. Total offensive yards. We're probably going to be toward the bottom. Let's take a look. Oh, we're not the worst, but we are down there. Buccaneers currently are the worst total offensive yards team. Passing again, probably us. Let's take a look. Hey, just over a thousand yards passing. Better than, what was that, like 10? Cool. Let's see, best rushing team. Let's see, again, we're not the worst. So we're not the worst, but we're not very good. Points per game, Saints leading the league with 30 points per game, hot dog. And again, the Broncos only scoring 10 points. I, I thought our offense was bad. That's impressively bad. We are back here with 21.3. Jaguars lead in passing touchdowns. The Broncos only have three passing touchdowns. And we, we, we double that at six. Rushing touchdowns, 12 for the Eagles. Lions only have two. Man. And then we're up there with six. First downs, we've got 98. That should be pretty league average. Yeah, say that's about middle of the road not bad defensively this is definitely where we're going to uh oh well look at that we're not the total worst uh, that goes to the texans who have allowed 2229 that's a lot uh passing we are also second worst at 1452 about uh what would that be about 70 or so behind the chiefs and then rushing yards allowed. Let's see, we're doing pretty bad there. We're at 720. 
Yeah, so we're on the wrong side of that. Points allowed, yep, by eight. Patriots also given up a lot. We've allowed 178 so far. Defense has 12 sacks, which is pretty good. We're pretty close to uh, second place. Definitely not close to first place with Aaron Donald averaging two sacks per game. Ah, that's nuts. Fumbles. Jacksonville has recovered eight. Dang. That's crazy. And then we lead the league in interceptions, uh, followed by our NFC South counterparts, the Falcons and Saints. Excellent. How are we looking on third down conversions? I don't think we... Eh, 41%. Eh. It's all right. Fourth down. I know we don't do too much fourth down. We should be pretty low, I guess. Yeah, 33%. Two for six. Not too good. Colts haven't converted any fourth downs this year. Uh, I don't think we've tried any two-point conversions. Lions have attempted three and done two. Not bad. And then let's see. Yeah, we're at zero percent. Let's see, red zone efficiency. We've been in the red zone 23 times, which is actually pretty darn good. However, we're only scoring on less than half. Not the worst, but definitely very bad. Defensively, our team has been in the end, uh, red zone the most, allowing 14 touchdowns total and eight field goals, so looking at 50% there. Uh, I'd say that's actually, it's not bad. They're scoring on 50%. Yeah, I like it. it. Looks like the Falcons, that's 11 total scores out of 18 attempts, pretty good. Uh, penalties, because this game doesn't call penalties right. We've only had three so far this year. Uh, averaging three, yeah, what is that? Uh, like 10, 10 yards per penalty. And the commander is leading the NFL with 415 penalty yards. There's a reason you are 0-6 right now. Holy moly. Not good. Turnover differential, Seahawks got nine. Very nice, and we are at negative five. Again, not the worst. We've given the ball away 16 times. 14 of those have been interceptions. We've lost two fumbles, but we've taken it away 11 times, which should be, yep, third in the NFL with our nine touchdowns, or, er, <laughs> yeah, nine interceptions and two fumble recoveries. Awesome. Here's a quick look at the stats for everybody so far. Let's take a look at weekly awards. Who's been playing out of their minds this year? Week one was Justin Fields and somebody Ellis. Oh yeah, I remember. I think that was yeah that was against us. Yeah, he um, he was all over the field. Uh, Pierce and Holcomb in the AFC there. Week two, Jalen Hurts and Woolen, and then Lamar and Buckner. A lot of passing yards there for the running back, Lamar Jackson. Excellent. Week three, Miles Sanders showed out. Actually, that, wow, that's two weeks in a row for Woolen. Good job for him. Uh, Sanders, NFC Offensive Player of the Week there. Mac Jones doing pretty well. And Stingley Jr. Week four, Leonard Fournette. I think that was the week he ran all over us. And Jeff Okuda, nice. Patrick Peterson and Joe Burrow, just under 400 yards passing for him. Week five, Desmond Ritter. Wow. It was that Demario Davis and Quinnen Williams and Patrick Mahomes. And then this past week, Matt Stafford. Oh, uh, Kobe White? No. I don't know. Mr. White for the New York Giants. Milano and Lawrence. Excellent job by those guys every week. All right. Here we take a look at some news stories throughout this past week. 
Doesn't look like anything's too crazy. Don't see anything for any draft, guys. So with that, let's take a look at our college players. Who is coming into the league this year? There we go. We got a list of our top 10 prospects right there. So we've got a handful of guys here in the top five. As far as I know, we do not have a first round pick this year. So we still need help along the offensive line. That much is certain. So let's take a look. We got uh, two quarterbacks here. Could go in the first two rounds. Ron Taylor and Carson Wald Walden. Not too worried about the quarterback position, but it's not. There's not a lot of talents, at least on the surface. Running back, another position we're currently not too worried about. We got one, maybe two guys in the first round and a handful of day three guys not too crazy there nobody's really catching my eye to back up miles sanders or chuba hubbard don't really need anything there yeah, fullbacks nice guys receivers pretty it's all right there in the middle we got one deep route runner here with an A. This guy's got an A catching. Connor Lawrence out of Oklahoma. That could be an interesting guy to look at with our second, or well, technically with our first pick. Let's see, we got anybody else? This guy looks interesting. Sean Coleman out of Alabama. We'll go ahead and heart him couple other B catching guys here. Larry Winters out of Iowa State and Justin, or sorry, Jason Winslow out of USC. Anybody down here kind of look interesting? Can't catch but can run a route. Interesting. We get into our projected UDFAs. All right. Tight ends, another possible place to look. Dante Williams out of Clemson looks solid right now. Spencer Beckford as well, good run blocker and good catcher. That could be interesting if we don't manage to keep um, uh, Tremble or Ian Thomas if we move on. And who knows what's gonna happen with uh, Hayden Hurst. Let's see who else we got. Ellis Quintana. Okay. Definitely could be somebody we look at late. Depending on what we do with our free agents. Couple guys to keep an eye on there. Not too bad. Left tackle, not a big need, but let's see if there's anybody here who stands out. Tyree Shields from Notre Dame. He's got an A. We got an unpro uh, we got a projected UDFA here with the B awareness, but F run block. Nothing too wild there. Guard. Don't know too much about these guys just yet, but it's not a very deep class at guard. Possible UDFA here we could look at. He's also dropped a lot. Wow, he's down 114. Hope he's okay. Same thing for Deshaun uh, Fitzsimmons. A couple of these guys have dropped massively. Which will be fine. We could pick them up in a free agency after the draft. Jonathan Graham and Paul Waters here. Man, need a center, but there is nothing doing. I mean, if we want to upgrade over Bozeman, like... We're going to have to look in free agency, honestly. This guy's got some good stats to start. Let's keep them on the board just for the heck of it. 
There's a couple there. I'm going to have to get whoever's scouting centers off centers because there is nothing there. And right guard. Right guard looks a bit deeper. Here's a good one. Thomas Baldwin out of Stanford. A awareness, a pass block. And then we got our UDFAs. Mm -hmm. Ooh, well-rounded Bra uh, Brandon Bodden out of Texas A&M. Not bad whatsoever. Somebody we definitely should keep our eye on. And then right tackle. I guess this is where the good guys are, huh? I mean, I don't think we're going to lose Taylor Moten. Maybe one of these guys could make a guard or center. That would be interesting. Let's see. Top five, first round. Possibility that Addison Willis might fall. We'll keep him. We'll take a look at him. And then UDFAs. Awesome. Defensively, let's take a look here. Could always use some help along the line. Let's see. Good block shedding. Bad finesse move for Ross Landry. Let's see, Elijah Albert with the B finesse. A lot of these guys probably... Day three with B block shedding. A lot of these guys probably just be backup depth. Definitely got to figure out uh, defensive tackle is going to be a big need. That's for sure. On the right side, we got a good finesse rusher here. Top five, that's Eli Gaffney. And then Khalid Fulton. Good tackler here in Trevor Harris. Don't know much about a lot of these guys just yet. Justin Schaefer. Anybody stand out? A lot of not very good pass rushers. All right. Defensive tackle. This will be a big need for us. Looks like Jamison Carver's got a pretty good look here early with B finesse and B uh, power. That's somebody to keep an eye on. Possibly Von, Von Fletcher here. Not a very, a lot of, um, it's not very deep, but there's a lot of day three talents. That's unfortunate, Just hoping for maybe I mean, I mean, you never know. Like, we haven't really scouted uh, Mr. Tyson here. Could actually end up with good um, ratings. So, let's take a look here. We've got our left linebackers. We've got a good pass rusher here in Adam Turner. Good. Well, maybe a run stopper. He's got the block shed. Kevin God Goodwin, not too bad. A tackling. Ben Hill out of Texas got that A zone, interesting. And Shelton Merritt with the B zone. Okay. And then up the middle, not very good. Let's see what we've got up the middle here. We got a Z or Z. That's obviously a C, not a Z. Yeah. It's not even that early in the morning. And just, my brain isn't working. B tackling. Don't know too much about these guys right now. That's unfortunate. Not great talents. Let's take a let's keep an eye on Ray Winslow here. He's got B tackling. Kai Warlick, Warwick out of West Virginia could be interesting. Actually, yeah, let's take a look at Ben Floyd too out of Virginia Tech. And then on the right side, what do we know about these guys? Good pursuit here by Caius Cassius, sorry, Adkins. Connor Howard out of Air Force. Really good zone coverage here by Bruce Simmons. He looks like a coverage linebacker. Maybe somebody who could play the middle or safety. 
And then the same with Marcus Mitchell out of Bowling Green. Take a look at them. Could always use some safety help if they don't pan out. Plus they're on the smaller side, 220. Another good zone guy here in Jeff Leonard. He's projected not to be drafted. And then corners. A man B press. A man B press. A zone. Zone. Okay, we got a couple A zoners here. Another A man B press guy. Ooh, we got a good press guy, but not a good man coverage guy. Another A zone. Let's see if they got a if they got an A grade. Might as well take a look. Good catcher guy here, Quinton Watkins. Doesn't hurt to put these guys on the board. Any undrafted guys stand out. Good zone guy here out of Massachusetts, Ben Hartwell. Could be an interesting guy. Okay, safety, what do we got here? Let's take a look. Got a really good uh, man coverage here. Doubt he'll fall out of the first round, but Monte Wiggins. Then we have Justin Spiller, looks like a hitter. He's got A power. Oh, here we go. We got a B-man coverage guy. I like to see the zone. Good tackler here in Trevor Carver. Does anybody have anything interesting? C-zone for a lot of these guys, and we're in our free agents. Okay. And then strong safety. Let's see what we've got here. Power. Let's tackle. C man and tackle for John Murphy out of Clemson. All right. It's got a lot of power, but not a very good tackler. Brian Hayes. Don't know enough about some of these guys. Nothing yet that really t catches my eye. Any kickers stand out? We got. Uh, Man, pretty sure that's kick accuracy. What is select? I want to do press X. Short accuracy. Why are they showing short accuracy? <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess we're throwing, but like it's just <laughs> what? Here we go, Noah Gilbert. An interesting uh, kicker with a kick accuracy. Be awareness. Could be somebody to keep an eye on. And then Steve Jordan out of Liberty. Could be another kicker to keep our eye on. He's got really good short accuracy. Uh, punters. Ooh. Brad Folds. A awareness, A kick accuracy. I like it. Yeah, why isn't kick power in here? Like, what are they doing? Okay, we got a well-rounded Joel Andrews out of Florida State. All right, couple. Not too bad, not too bad. Don't know what we're going to do um, at this moment. Uh, Mach 2 hasn't come out yet. But so far, they are projecting Dwayne Owens to go number one to Green Bay with Eli Gaffney following him. Could be interesting. Cardinals have a couple first round picks here late. Like I said, if we um, if we look to trade into like maybe the end of the first round, like Cardinals have a couple extra picks they don't need. Um, maybe we can get something from Seattle or uh, Minnesota to get into or the end of the first round. And then go up and take a pretty good prospect. I'd have to say though, oh, who was my favorites? 
Honestly, we can get Dante Williams. I think that'd be pretty good. Him. I like Spencer Beckford. Actually, here we go. Uh, Brandon Bodden, uh, right guard out of Texas A&M, might be my favorite right now to go with our first pick if he's going to, if he's still going to be there. Um, so he'd probably be my favorite right now. A couple guys, like if they fall, maybe. But who knows if that's going to happen. Can't really rely on guys falling. Uh, Jameson Carver's not terrible either. Another guy I kind of like. Uh, we'll take a look at his abilities right here. Physical player delivers bone crushing hits. Love to utilize the spin as a counter move. Uh, he's got a high motor. That's good. Lacks discipline. That's unfortunate. They do have Carolina as a top fit, uh, which is nice. So he's all right. Looks like he'll have pretty good ex uh, acceleration. Uh, great to elite strength. Okay, okay. And pretty fast for his size. Good finesse moves, good power moves. Definitely, definitely somebody to keep an eye on as a round one to two projection. And there you have it. Our first look at the draft class. Couple guys there to like. It really sucks without having a first round pick. So, uh, let's take a quick look at our injuries. I think we should be more healthy now, as Hayden Hurst is still out, but uh, Brady Christensen's coming back. So that is good. All right, and that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this look into our draft class. Hope you guys are excited for some of those players we could hopefully get on our team. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.